Welcome back. You're watching Mario Miles and first up, some good news. No one unsubscribed after my last video. So this video is going to be a vlog following Daniela and I's first flight of the DJI Mavic Air drone. We flew for the first time in a local park at sunset, which I'll tell you later on is not necessarily a good idea when you're not wearing a jumper or anything. I'm going to let the footage speak for itself and I will jump in towards the end to talk about our first impressions and things that we wanted to improve going into the second flight, lessons that we learned and give you some tips and tricks to hopefully make sure you avoid these mistakes when you fly your drone for the first time. Just so you know, everything in this video is flown with the DJI Mavic Air in beginner mode. Beginner mode means that you're limited to um, a maximum height and a maximum distance from the remote controller of 30 meters. So that's in both directions, or for those that are metrically impaired, it's 100 feet. So the drone can fly 100 feet away and 100 feet up, and, and that's it, no further than that. The control sticks are also much less sensitive to, to input. So if you put the control stick fully up, it's not going to have a, a runaway drone from you and crash into a tree or something like that. So that's good. Obviously the drone has collision avoidance and A-pass, which we'll go into more detail in a future video. Let's jump right into the action. We're going to start with Daniela setting up the drone, taking it for its maiden flight, and then you'll see me doing some flying and we'll look at some of the more advanced features as well. I'll put comments on the screen in text, as I say, and then I'll come back later in the video and we will have a little discussion about things that we can do better on our first impressions. Right, let's get straight into it. Show me what you're doing. First is this one. One second, I need to check. Push it all the way and it's not gone quick. And this one need to be, and this one, hmm? Yep, so the bottom one's flipped under and out. Okay. Careful with this dog. And after this one there. Oh, again, don't pull the blade. Push the motor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Flip it up. Pull those out. Done. Okay. Now, no, wait, 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 wait. Press and then press again and hold for three seconds. And then put it down. <laughs> yep. Here, same. Press and then press and hold again. So. First, what I need to do? Corner. Okay, so first things first, you want to take off. So press the takeoff button, press precision takeoff, and then slide takeoff. Wait till it's finished the takeoff. Wow, it looks quite far up. Always take your own judgment. If you think it's not safe, always return to home when you think it's not safe, yeah? So use your own judgment. Slide to return to home. And then Go don't out. touch it. Right, now wait, it'll come up something on the screen, right? Give it a second. Right, when it gets to a certain point, it'll come up on the screen something. Right, press force landing. Nice. <laughs> Not fun. E. 
ages of that. Kill my body. Okay, so as we watch the sun set on the day of our maiden flight in the Mavic Air, I wanted to talk about some of the sort of first impressions and things that we liked and didn't like with the, the Mavic Air from our first flight. So the first mistake that we made was we left the video on auto for all settings, which meant that it was taking video at 1080 30 and auto white balance, auto exposure, and everything else was on auto and as you see and I put some comments throughout the video so far that left certain shots really overexposed and other shots underexposed and so you'll be seeing that as you watch through the video that the settings on the camera the footage kind of abruptly change sometimes and that's the auto settings sort of doing their job but it looks kind of terrible so going into the next video our next flight we're going to use manual settings and I'll talk more about that in the next video the, the second thing was, even at 30 metres away and 30 metres up, so we're limited in the beginner mode, we were finding that the, the remote controller was dropping out or giving a sort of low signal warning. I'm not sure if that was just because there was, you know, a high interference in, in the area, lots of Wi-Fi or mobile, maybe there was a mobile phone tower sort of nearby that was interfering with the signal. So we kind of wanted to get out to a bit of a better area, take it out of beginner mode and see if we can get that signal better. There are other things we can try and we might look at that in future video. One of the big mistakes we made was we were filming at sunset. So as soon as the sun went down, we were near a bunch of trees. A whole swarm of bugs came out and attacked us as we left the park. And I actually ended up with a highly sort of swollen left arm with multiple bites on it. I'll show you a picture now in the video so you can enjoy that. I ended up on a course of penicillin for a week on the back of this. So advice, if you are going to fly at sunset where there's lots of trees and potentially bugs going to come out and attack you after sunset, do wear a jumper or something, make sure you're covered up because, you know, it's not a fun experience getting bitten and, you know, having all those sort of issues that I had. So don't, 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 don't do that. Okay, so on to the pros. The precision return to home is fantastic. We're, you're about to see after the sunset video completes that it's going to do our return to home and land on precision landing. You'll actually see it as it gets closer to the ground. It will make a maneuver to recenter the landing pad in its landing procedure. So it actually knows it's not going to land perfectly and makes that correction itself. That's not any input from myself or Daniela. It's doing that in the next scene. It's fun. Flying a drone is fun and I know I'm going to talk about it. The CAA are trying to make it less fun with drone registration and operator registration fines and fees in the next few weeks and months. So we'll talk about that in a separate video, but for now it's fun as long as you follow the drone code, which again we'll talk about in a different video, it's a fun experience. And as you saw in our faces when making this video, you know, it just makes you happy to be outside and flying this, the drone. It's just a fun experience. The, the video feeding back to the phone was super clear. So the remote being plugged directly into the phone, I find this was a better experience than in the past when I've flown with a Spark, where, you know, the phone is trying to connect to the drone and the remote controller connects to the drone on sort of different connections. The phone doesn't necessarily get that feedback from the camera all the time. And, 
you know, the quality has been kind of rubbish. So the video feed through the DJI Go 4 app is awesome. Really like that. That's excellent. And I guess that final part, you saw the drone was following me around and I actually used the hand movement to, to land it. The smart capture, that's pretty fun and it works really well. So I'm not sure how much I would use that. I'm, I want to do a video or two about how I can maybe get smart capture to follow my car driving through a sort of dirt track or something. And we'll see if we can make sort of more videos with that going forward. But for now, it's fun. I really enjoyed it. I think Danielle really enjoyed it and we're looking forward to our next flight. Well, let's watch the drone do a return to home and then that'll be the end of the video. So like and subscribe, share with your friends and put comments down below what you liked, what you didn't like, because as always, your feedback drives the content of this channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Where's the landing?